Welcome guys to another video back in the office. <laughs> um, today, highly requested topic. Are you fit enough to be a pilot? Stay, you're gonna find out. First, let's the intro. So guys, what you gotta understand is there are four different kind of medicals, at least I'm gonna talk about four different kind of medicals. First one is medical class one, Medical class two is the second one, medical class three, and the LAPL medical. Those four medicals are all for different genres, but for example, medical class one, you need to fly aircrafts commercially, which means with your ATPL, your um, CPL, or your MPL, then you gotta do medical class one, which is the most restrictive one. Medical class two, on the other hand, is more for the private use, which means, um, PPL or your sail plane license or balloonists even they have to do medical class 2 then there's medical class 3 which is for example for air traffic controllers and then there's the LAPL which is for um, it's a bit less restricted than the medical class 2 for private planes also but keep in mind I'm not a doctor I'm gonna strictly stick to the EASA rules and um, with that said let's get more in depth to the medical class one guys the most restricted of them all you gotta get tested yearly up to the age of 59 and then each six months until you're not flying anymore what gets tested is the first examination you're gonna get tested in a lot of things for example blood test urine test, color blindness, eyesight, an ECG, you're gonna get tested in hearing test, you got to have a physical examination and an eyeball pressure test. All those things get tested at the first examination. You do not have to do them each time you go to the medical examination yearly because they have a time spans where they are current for or in what they are current for. So Dude, my English is bad today, but we're just gonna keep rolling with the video. <laughs> and um, so let's get started with the first one, the blood test. In the blood test, basically, um, blood is taken from you, like any doctor would do it, and they test for the hemoglobin level in your blood. That's basically it with the blood test. Then you've got a urine test where they test for blood in the urine, and glucose level, so basically blood sugar. After that one, you've got the eyesight test. In the eyesight tests, it's a pretty normal eyesight test. When, and with that said, you can be a pilot even though you wear glasses. Trust me, I'm wearing glasses and I'm a pilot. And there are so many colleagues of me of mine that they're uh, which are wearing glasses. So. That's probably really the most asked question. Can I be a pilot with glasses? Yes, you can. <laughs> and um, the eyesight test is basically done when you're wearing glasses, first without your glasses and then with your glasses. And the uh, normal restrictions are up to plus minus three diopters or even up to five. But keep in mind, airlines can change or strengthen regulations about eyesight or about any topic I'm gonna to tell you today. So. Those are just the basic EASA regulations. You can Google all the minimum requirements you need. And uh, off to the next one, color blindness test. Probably the most done test of those ones is the Ishihara test. That is the test with the book where you've got like those round circles and different colors and there are numbers in there which you have to read. And you do not have to uh, not be able to read all of them. There will be about 24 pics in there, pictures, and you gotta get 15 right of them to pass a medical class one examination. So that's, I wouldn't say you're allowed to be colorblind because colorblindness is a really big thing when you want to be a pilot because you need to see colors because everything is color coded in aviation. For example, we've got, we've got buttons which are amber and red. So basically you gotta, be able to um, see the difference between those two colors and 
That's why you gotta pass the medical examination and your colorblindness test. So guys, next up on the list, ECG. That's basically the thing where they put um, like electrons, I think, on your body, on various parts of your body, and they test your heart muscle, how it's functioning, if everything is fine. And that is done at the first examination, obviously, and then each five years up to the age of 30, each three, uh, two years up to the age of 40, and then annually up to the age of 50, and then with every examination. Easy G, guys. Next up, guys, is the hearing test. That's basically where they put you in an acoustic chamber, which is soundproof from the outside, and they're gonna put your headphones on and they're gonna play you various sounds and various frequencies, and you gotta push a button as soon as you hear it, or as soon as you hear one something. And that's how they check if you're Hearing is good. There are different frequencies you have to hear and you can Google all of them. Just type in uh, medical class one hearing test frequencies and then you're gonna find a bunch of them. Next up on the list guys is the lung function test. That's basically done by you having a tube in your mouth. Well, before you get the tube in your mouth, you have to inhale as much as you can. Then you get a tube in your mouth and you gotta exhale as fast as you can and with the most pressure you can produce. And that there's a graph as well, which you have to hit and some regulations to it. You can Google them as well. And that's basically a lung function test. It's not nothing special, just inhale, exhale as fast and with the most pressure you can produce. One of the last things you need to do on your first day, on your first examination for medical class one is a physical examination. That's nothing really special you just have to stand on one leg for example you have to do like the, the nose touching thing all those things nothing you should be afraid of um that's basically the physical examination and then there's one last thing which is gonna get tested and that's your eyeball pressure eye pressure eyeball pressure yeah that's basically it and um and what you keep in mind guys is that when you had any pre-existing conditions for example you had um, something was wrong with your lung in an early age, but it, it's better now, it's gone. But they could order you to go to a specialist to let that check and then come back to the medical. Just keep that in mind. So if you have any pre-existing conditions, they could send you to a specialist to let that check. So guys, that basically sums up medical class one. So off to the next one, medical class two, three and LAPL. Just for your information, I'm not going to go into each one of those ones now because they basically just the medical class one in an easier way and it just gets easier the more you go down the licenses or the, the medicals. And the medical class two, the, the big difference is in the valid phase of each medical. So the medical class two is valid for five years up to the age of 40, then from the age of 40 to the age of 50 for two years and from the age of 50 onwards you got to do it each year the examination still physical examination an ecg etc etc but when you go to a medical class three it's just for air traffic control I'm gonna keep that one out now and then there's an lapl medical as well which is probably the most easiest one to do and the valid phase of that one is like the longest as well so it's still five years up to the age of 40 and um, two years from the age of 40 onwards, you don't have that 50 gap like in the medical class two. So that just stays at two years from the age of 40 onwards. And another difference is that you do not have to do an ECG except when the doctor finds it necessary. So um, basically you get rid of the ECG test. And one thing I forgot in the medical class two you need to do a hearing test as soon as you've got an IFR rating in it. And that hearing test is just like in the medical class one, five years up to the age of 40, and then each two years from the age of 40 onwards, cause IFR, you gotta talk to ATC, you need your ears. And that basically sums up if you are fit enough to be a pilot. And one note, don't be scared of it. When you're in, your, in the young age, you run maybe each month once <laughs> and you feel fit 
don't be scared of the test. It's, it's really doable. There's nothing bad to it. The doctors are really nice always. I've been to two or three different one at once and don't be scared. It's, it's, it's gonna be fine, trust me. With that said, I hope you liked today's video. A lot of information I know and be sure to smash that like, give me a thumbs up. Well, that's, that's actually smashing the like. Do that, leave a subscribe, great day. See you next time guys, bye bye.